Hi, I'm Brandon, and I like to party. Hello once again, everybody. Yes, it is Brandon, and I do like to party, and I like to review movies, and that's what I do here at Marotta Media. But happy Halloween, everybody. At the time of this recording, Halloween is actually tomorrow, but by the time this video gets out, it'll be Halloween. And that is precisely why I am wearing this costume. This is my Halloween costume this year. It probably looks absolutely terrible and ridiculous on camera, but whatever, I am committing to the bit. And I did this a few years ago when I reviewed Halloween Kills on Halloween night. In that video, I was wearing my costume that year. I was Cliff Booth from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And as you can see, this year I am Rod Kimball from Hot Rod, one of my favorite comedy movies ever made. And this is precisely why I don't have long hair, because this wig is itchy and this mustache looks terrible and it's also very uncomfortable. And it might fall off at some point during this review, I guess we'll find out. But I could think of no better time than Halloween to review one of the biggest horror movies of the year. Terrifier 3. This thing is really going to give me a hard time throughout this review. If it falls off, it falls off. Terrifier 3 is obviously the third installment into the Terrifier franchise, and it picks up right where the events of Terrifier 2 left off. Art the Clown has returned, meanwhile the characters we followed in Terrifier 2, Sienna and her brother Jonathan, are still reeling from the events of Terrifier 2. And both of them must confront Art once again during Christmas. The Terrifier franchise is not really a franchise that I have any sort of strong feelings about. A lot of people seem to absolutely love this franchise and others say it's just horrendous, but I don't really go either way. I respect this franchise for what it's doing, but I was hoping that it would just offer a little bit more than it did after the first installment. Because I think the first Terrifier movie is very bad. I think that movie is nothing more than torture porn. It relied solely on the kills, and I guess that's what it was going for, and props to it for doing that, but I was hoping for a little bit more when it came to narrative. And that's precisely what Terrifier 2 did. That movie actually attempted to tell a story on top of the gory kills. And that's why I think Terrifier Fire 2 is a gigantic step up from its predecessor, although it is still not perfect. But going into Terrifier 3, I was very nervous because I knew that this movie was going to up the ante. And in a lot of cases, it absolutely did. And in other cases, it fell flat. One thing that remains about Terrifier 3 is the kills. I knew going into Terrifier 3 that this movie was probably going to try to have even more gory kills, and there are gory kills in here, don't get me wrong, but I don't think there was anything nearly as memorable as the previous two. But that did not stop me from being disgusted at some of these kills. There is even one scene at the very beginning of this movie that is bound to upset people. If you've seen the movie, you absolutely know what I'm talking about. In fact, in my theater during this scene, a few people even walked out. In fact, people walked out of my theater all throughout the screening. But a lot of people walked out during this one particularly upsetting scene, even groups of children who were probably like 10 to 12 years old, and they were by themselves, so I don't even know how they got into the movie. But a lot of the kills in this movie were very popular topics of discussion, particularly one kill that happens in a shower. And this kill is very brutal, but in my opinion it wasn't even the most brutal kill within the movie. But something that I feel like the Terrifier movies don't get a lot of praise for are its acting performances. Because David Howard Thornton is absolutely fantastic as Art the Clown. He has truly elevated this character into being a horror icon of this generation. And his performance is even more impressive because Art does not say a word, and David Howard Thornton is able to express so much as Art the Clown without saying anything. And I really respect physical performances like this that rely solely on the character's mannerisms. It just seems a lot more difficult than a challenge in acting. But something else I admire about Art is that he's frightening Yet he's hilarious. And I think in Terrifier 3, Art is easily the funniest that he has ever been. There's one scene where he goes into a bar and meets a guy who dressed like Santa Claus and he's freaking out because he's like, oh my god, you're Santa Claus, you're that guy. And it was oddly sweet and funny, but it turned dark because you probably know where the scene was going. There's another scene where a character is tied up in a chair and Art keeps hitting the person in the head over and over again for absolutely no reason. And every time he did, I just laughed out loud. I thought it was hilarious. I also can't praise the performances in this movie without praising Lauren Lavera as Sienna Shaw. 
Because just like art being a horror icon for this generation, I think that Sienna Shaw absolutely has the potential to be the iconic final girl of this generation. Sort of like Sidney Prescott from Scream. Because I truly do love her character, because they expand on her a little bit more within Terrifier 3, and she's just an overall badass, especially at the end of this movie, but no spoilers. But the way it expanded upon her character, as well as her brother Jonathan's, is that both of them are still dealing with the events of Terrifier 2. And both of them seem to be suffering from some form of PTSD. There's a really great scene that showcases Sienna's PTSD when she's eating dinner with her family at the table. But my biggest issue with Terrifier 3 is that this movie doesn't really feel like it ever moves the story forward. It doesn't expand on any of the lore or backstory that was established in Terrifier 2. I've seen a lot of people say that this movie goes back to Terrifier 1 roots of not having a story, and I disagree. There is a story, but the story is just very stagnant. Everything that was established in Terrifier 2 is never taken any further. And in my opinion, by the time Terrifier 3 ended, it felt like we were in the exact same place we were at the end of Terrifier 2. We didn't really learn anything new about Art or where he came from, what he is. And apparently we're going to get those answers within Terrifier 4, but who knows when that movie's coming out, but it has been confirmed. But Terrifier 3 also does suffer from slow pacing in parts. That was easily my biggest complaint with Terrifier 2. That movie was way too long. It ran at almost two and a half hours. That movie had no business being that long. And Terrifier 3 once again suffers from a long runtime, but this movie isn't as long. It's just a little bit over two hours. But I still feel like this movie did not need to be that long. I think a good 20 to 30 minutes could have been shaved off this runtime and we would have been fine. A result of this long runtime is because a lot of these scenes just drag on a lot longer than they really need to. I think the mustache is falling off. Gotta keep it on for the whole thing. But Terrifier 3 does end on a cliffhanger, and I'm sure that we're going to get more answers and backstory into what all of this is in Terrifier 4. But the ending of this movie had me a little bit worried. And it had me worried because of a very specific reason. It feels like Terrifier 4 could go down the road of the Fast and Furious franchise. And what I mean by that is that it's obviously a franchise with one thing in mind, and that is the kills, and obviously the Fast and Furious franchise just has the over-the-top antics and stunts as the mainstay. That is what people pay to see. They don't want to see a story. But the problem is, is that Terrifier 2 actually established things and attempted to tell a story, but it did nothing to expand upon them. It feels like Terrifier 3 is just trying to go back to just being a mainstay for brutal kills, and that's it. And that could be okay for some people because, you know, people pay to see these movies just to see brutal kills, and that's fine. But the problem with that is, is that I feel like the franchise could go back to wanting to focus on nothing more than the kills again. And this is precisely what the Fast and Furious franchise did. It doesn't really worry about the stories anymore, it just wants to show you the over-the-top action. But the problem with the Fast and Furious franchise is that each movie tries to up the ante every single time and get more insane. But I think the Fast and Furious franchise has reached its peak and there's nothing more it can do to be as crazy as it has been. Okay, the mustache is coming off, the damn thing was fighting me and I didn't want to keep fighting back. We almost made it though. But anyway, back to to my point. The Fast and Furious franchise has done just about everything they do to be as crazy as possible, so it feels like everything they do from this point on just is stale because we've seen it before. I truly don't think there is anywhere for that franchise to go but down because I think it reached its peak in F9 when they went to space. There is nothing more crazy that you can do than that. And I'm worried that Terrifier will fall into the same trap. With each movie entry, it'll just continue to be more bloody and brutal, and one day it's going to reach its peak, but it won't know when it's overstayed its welcome. They'll just keep making movies over and over again because these movies make money. And every time they try to think of something crazier, it's going to be boring and stale because we've seen it all before. I don't know if that point's gonna make sense to everybody, but I truly believe that. But we'll see if that does happen because Terrifier 4 and I believe Terrifier 5 have been confirmed, but Damien Leone wants to end it with Terrifier 5, if I'm correct. 
So I really hope that that's where it does end and this franchise doesn't overstay its welcome. In the end, I do think that Terrifier 3 is a good movie and I completely understand why people absolutely love it, but I do also understand why people just absolutely hate it. But I hate to be a fence rider on this one, but this is just how I feel. I don't overly hate these movies, but I don't overly love them either. I was excited for this movie because of everything that was established within Terrifier 2, but as I said, Terrifier 3 didn't really do anything to expand upon it. It's still entertaining, it's still a good movie with great acting performances. I was just hoping for a little bit more. And in the end, I would give Terrifier 3 a 6 out of 10. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my review of Terrifier 3. If you guys saw this movie, let me know what you thought about it. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Do you think it was the best in the trilogy so far? If you guys like this review, be sure to hit that thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe. If you want to see my previous reviews, I will link those right over here. Other than that, I hope you all have a tremendous rest of your day. Happy Halloween, and I will see you all next time.